Uh, bada beam, bada bam. Welcome to this week's Bacon a Mystery, Bacon a Murder episode. Guys, listen, I decided, husband, can you hit that record button so that I don't have to hit it? And he's like, yeah, yeah, this button, I got you, babes. I sit down. He's like, so what happens? I'm going, I'm giving him a recap. He did not hit the record <laughs> button. He's over here so excited. He's got a bag of snacks. He's got a bag of snacks listening to me and he didn't hit the record button. I'm going to act like I didn't hear anything. Okay. So. Welcome to the finale part of the K-drama series called Night Has Come. Yes. Yes. I just gave them a little clap. Thank you so much. Thank you. Listen, I saw the comments. I was like, Stephanie never finishes her series. And now I've made it my absolute personality to finish every single fucking series. So here we are 12 episodes deep. Honey, you have too many things to finish. So it's a little too late to say that. (sighs) Okay, sorry. She means like going forward. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I will be repenting for my grave mistakes for the rest of my life. I'm so sorry. But let's let's hear the finale. So this show has honestly been so much fun to watch, but to also talk about. And now I'm very nervous for you to see because the ending is a lot. The ending is it's very unhinged, okay? It's about to get crazy. I'm going to link part one and part two down in the comments, but the general premise of the show is I look like I'm giving birth, okay? The general premise of the show is a group of high school students are going to go on a weekend trip into the mountains at one of those youth centers. When the bus pulls up, it's one singular class and they're one singular homeroom teacher and they realize that all the other buses with all the other kids from the school are gone. They're lost. So the homeroom teacher who literally gets two seconds of airtime in this show, okay, RIP homeroom teacher, he goes to find all the other buses, taking all the workers from the youth center with him and essentially leaving a group of 35 high school students completely unsupervised. And honestly, I would say they're pretty well behaved the very first night, except when they get an alert on their phones, a text message, an app that was downloaded onto their phones mysteriously the minute that they stepped onto campus to play the game Mafia. Mafia is a game where each person has an occupation and nobody else can know their occupation. So technically, anybody can lie about their jobs. There are civilians, one doctor, one police officer, and a bunch of Mafia members. And at night, the Mafia members have to physically kill a civilian. Their objective and how they win the game is kill off most of the civilians, including the doctor and the police officer. Then when the sun comes up, the doctor can choose one person to heal the next night it's like a whole thing but they're trying to kill the civilians and then the civilians wake up and they're trying to kill the mafia members but they don't know who they are so they're all just sitting here being like no that person's suspicious and then at the end of the night they have one hour to vote if they don't vote they die everybody's fucking dying in this show like you get attached to someone they're gonna be dead by the end of episode Did you know that's a thing that they do? Like, you know, when an episode starts and you get a little attached to someone, you're like, ah, this person's gonna die, obviously. Why else are we talking about this person? They're gonna die. Main characters don't die. We don't know. This could be Game of Thrones. Then you have the police officer who can ask someone their occupation once a day. But the problem is, if you're a police officer, you don't want people to know that you're a police officer because then the mafia is gonna kill you. Sometimes multiple people claim to be the police officer for whatever reason. And just because the police officer knows who Mafia is does not mean the civilians will win, nor will the civilians even believe them. So it's very, very complicated. It's a game of lies, manipulation, trust, which these high schoolers are forced to get really good at because their homeroom teacher never comes back. Their youth center people never come back. They're alone. This is it. This game is their life. And a lot of these students have secrets, like the fact that a girl in their class had jumped from the bridge into the river after being viciously bullied by her classmates. There were rumors that she was pushed off the bridge. And all signs are pointing to the fact that this girl that supposedly was killed, supposedly self-exited, I don't know, is the host of this game. The game that's making them kill each other. And that girl is now back to get revenge so the last part part two ended with helen about to get voted off and killed off as mafia she ends up proving to everyone that she is the police officer and she requests the occupation of someone mimi her former best friend slash bully she shows the rest of the class that mimi is indeed mafia and that's where we left off so let's just get right back into it the whole group they're standing at the bottom of the stairs in the youth center voting is in a singular hour and mimi is trying to get everybody to vote for helen one of her closest friends because Mimi is scared that Helen has too strong of a moral compass and is going to tell everybody that they were somehow involved in Helen's death. Who's Helen again? 
Helen's like the nerdy kid that is friends with Mimi and Mina, the two girl bullies. So anyway, we still don't know how, but I'm still, I'm hoping we're going to find out how Helen and all these girls are involved in Helen's death. But Helen reveals to the group that she's the police officer. She goes on her phone, asks the game if Mimi is mafia, and it confirms, yes, Mimi is mafia. Holy sh- all the students are just silent side note i don't know why but all of them are still in uniform like this is a weekend trip did they not bring a change of clothes i digress helen showing her phone one by one to each of the students in the circle and they're all just quiet helen then turns to mimi it's your turn to take responsibility mimi so the three friends before all of this happened it used to be mimi mina and helen And another girl, Jules, but she's long gone. She died like a few episodes ago, okay? Mina was on Mimi's side. Like this whole time, she's like, yeah, I do think Helen's being suspicious. I'm with Mimi. We should all vote for Helen. And now she's walking towards Helen. Helen, I'm so sorry. Mimi fooled me too. I knew you weren't mafia. She tries to grab her arm and Helen snatches it away. Whatever, Mina. You're all the same. No, no, please. I knew knew you weren't the mafia. I always trusted you. Mina keeps trying to convince Helen, probably because she has no other allies in any of this. I mean, all she had were Mimi and Helen. Mimi's about to die because she's been outed as mafia. There's no way they're not all voting for her. And she turned on Helen the very last minute. So who's gonna, who's gonna have Mina's back? Mimi's eyes go big and she's just shaking her head, trying to tell the group like, no, there's been a mistake. <laughs> there's been a mistake. But pretty much everybody starts ganging up on her. Danny, who's fellow mafia, fellow mafia. Okay, remember the villain? Went from, he the little nerdy boy? Yes, went from nerdy boy getting bullied to the mafia guy that wears nothing but a silver apron that he stabs his former bullies to death in, in the middle of the night. The guy is weird. He's unhinged. He makes me, he honestly makes Kevin seem like a walk in the park. What? Yeah, he's getting so unhinged. You're, oh, it's about to get wild. He's the one that's like patting Mimi in the face, telling her to behave. The character development is crazy with Danny. And he's now pointing the finger at Mimi too. He would rather cut her out of the mafia than go down with her. Mimi, is that why you used me? You killed Kevin, didn't you? Kevin, the ultimate bully that Danny killed. Danny starts getting pissed about the idea in front of everyone. And Mina jumps in. Yeah, you crazy bitch. Mimi, you're you're the one who suggests stealing the keys first. Remember, they stole the keys from Kevin, the bully, before he was murdered. Mina is the other. Yeah, so Mina was against Helen for Mimi, and now she's for Helen against Mimi, okay? (laughs) And June, the male romance lead, steps up and says, did you kill Kevin too, Mimi? No, no, (laughs) no, nobody believes her. Christopher, another guy, runs up to Mimi and starts shaking her by the shoulders, Mimi did you do that to Esther too if it weren't for you she wouldn't have died so Esther was another friend of theirs now Albert shouts behind Christopher Albert and Christopher just remember they're biffles they're best friends Albert's like how could you do that to Esther we're all friends Mimi you're the one that who's Albert look at just another friend he wasn't important until randomly Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Christopher is his best friend, and they're all kind of friends with Mimi. And they were really close to a girl named Esther that Mimi had killed. Because Mimi was like, no, she's definitely mafia. So now they're realizing that's her friend. She knew she wasn't mafia and still accused her of being mafia. Mm. So it's like, you're weird. Yeah. Christopher is just straight up cornering Mimi and waiting for her to respond. And she stares him in the eye, chin up. She's not even trying to be like, oh my God, I'm sorry. She just said, there's nothing else I could have done. I did it because I wanted to live. Okay? I didn't want to fucking be mafia either. Christopher is over her bullshit. He grips her by her shirt and he threatens her. Cut your fucking bullshit. You only care about your own survival. What about us? And we can all just die? Huh? I swear I didn't kill anyone. Other people did it. I had nothing to do with Paxson either. So she's talking about the dead girl. She's basically just doing whatever she can to not get killed. And Uni brushes past Christopher to confront Mimi because Uni's pissed about this. Uni was friends with Pak Seon, remember? And she goes, hey, don't use Pak Seon so that you can live. You don't have the right. Is it not just everyone just accusing her right now? Yeah, which I don't know what they're accusing her of because she's already mafia. Yeah, right? like we know. Yeah, and, yeah. come on, let's move on. It's uh, time, is, time is money. You got people to kill, right? <laughs> Mimi does not care about what Uni is saying. She pushes Uni and says, who do you even think you are? 
No one believes you anymore, Mimi. You better shut the f*** up. And they're ready to fight. But before they really get into it, Wendy, Uni's best friend, pushes Mimi away. Hey, that's enough already. And Mimi is cornered again. She's looking at everybody, almost hoping that someone would have some semblance of sympathy for her, but they won't even make eye contact with her, which is the biggest red flag in this show. If they're going to kill you, they can't look at you, even if you're mafia. Like, that's when you know they're all voting for you. She looks over at June and tries to grab his hand. June, please, you have to help me. You have to save me, please. He snatches his hand away. Take responsibility like you said you would. He pulls out his phone and click. June has voted for Mimi. Everyone starts getting out their phones and starts voting. Mimi's freaking out at this point. The intercom keeps going off. Blank has voted for Mimi. Blank has voted for Mimi. Mimi's panicking. She's getting on her knees, but before she can even start begging them to not vote for her, she gets up and tries to grab Helen and Wendy's phones. No, please don't. Just give me your phone. Danny shoves her on the ground. That's enough, Mimi. And Mimi is just lying there, broken, sobbing. I mean, she looks up at everyone, and now she's mad. When she looks up, she's like peeking up through her hair, and she's, she's oh, spiteful. You're all being fooled right now. Do you really know who the mafia is? It's, and she's about to say something, someone's name, but something goes wrong. She starts grabbing her neck and starts to throw up blood. She tries to stop it with her hand, but she's literally bleeding like a faucet. The intercom goes off again. You You are are not allowed allowed to tell the civilians who else is mafia. Mimi's just spewing out blood and everyone is hovering over her, just staring. Christopher has this blank stare and he's just staring at her like, you have to be fucking kidding me. Just die already, Mimi. He pulls out his phone and he votes. Mimi crawls over to Uni, and Uni squats down to be eye level with her. Mimi's looking at her with like puppy dog eyes because Uni is supposed to be the morally, ethically upright female lead. And she just says bluntly, Mimi, why'd you do that? You did this to yourself. And she grabs her phone and votes For Mimi. Now Mimi's got blood and tears just streaming down her face. And for a minute, it's silent. She's just like on the ground, bloodied up. Everybody's standing up around her. And finally, Danny gives Mimi one last pitiful look and says, we should go hide everyone. Let's go. Because remember, voting is done by some mysterious phone app demon. So if you vote for someone, their eyes go white at midnight and they end up self-exiting. But at night, mafia have to come physically find you in the middle of the night and commit first degree homicide the old fashioned way. It's in everyone's best interest to find a hiding spot that seems secure and hard for mafia to locate. Because at 12, the music comes on, everybody knocks out. Wherever you are, you knock out. What happened if a mafia couldn't kill someone? Then one of them dies. Oh. Oh, yeah. So everyone starts walking away and leaves Mimi just on the floor. Mimi starts screaming hysterically, bashing her phone onto the ground. I mean, some of the girls, they can't help but look back for a second. But, I mean, she's going to die. There's no going around it. Mimi gets up and she starts walking around the lobby. And in her peripheral vision, she sees that fucking statue that was there when they first walked in at the beginning of the show just in the very front right when you walk into the youth center everybody saw it i mean some people even commented on it like what a weird creepy looking thing it's a marble statue of a woman sitting with her hands closed on her lap and her face is just sorrowful like she looks like she's going through it She turns to the marble statue and she starts getting these flashbacks. Her eyes start getting bigger and she realizes the similarities of the face of the marble statue and the girl in her flashbacks. The eyes, the hair. And she says, Pak Seun. And the intercom blares. The The voting voting has ended. ended. The The one one with the the most votes, Mimi, Mimi, will be executed. executed. The loud ringing starts and Mimi grabs her head. Her eyes are rolling back and she's just gripping the marble statue with her hand, slowly making their way to the floor. And she finds one of those, you know, one of those velvet ropes that hang between the barriers of the art museum pieces. Like those red? Yeah, red velvet ropes. She wraps it around her neck tighter until... Her neck snaps and you just hear the most awful bone-breaking noise. And then she falls to the floor, dead, D-E-A-D, dead. She's gone. And now, I gotta go change my shirt. It's very cute. Can we get a moment for the shirt? 
Thank you. Thank you so much. Moment of silence. Thank you. And now that we know that Helen is a police officer, we get a flashback to all the people that she verified their occupations. <laughs> Oliver, her love interest, was a civilian, but he ends up dying. <laughs> After that, she checked June's occupation. She found out that he's a civilian. Kevin, the school bully, was also a civilian. It was like a whole thing. We also found out that Helen is the one that anonymously wrote June equals civilian from police officer on the wall. Anyway, back to Mimi's dead body just in the lobby. The sleep music comes on and all the other students that are not mafia get knocked out and they're not going to wake up until morning where another person will be dead. Mimi's body is just laying under the green statue. Well, the statue is white, but um, there's like a green light that's making it glow. And it slowly turns red. And from the shadows, Danny walks up to Mimi's dead body. But he just kind of walks over her and walks straight up to the marble statue and starts talking. Looks like you and I are left now. Let's get rid of the police officer first. The morning music starts to play and the sun is out. So Uni's passed out on the beanbag chair and Wendy gets to wake her up. Hey, Uni, get up, get up. Uni's head kind of shoots up. What, what, what's wrong, what's wrong? Wendy's like, did you have a dream? No, I, I didn't. I, she's like rubbing her eyes. She's tired, she's stressed. And the intercom starts blaring. Helen was executed by mafia last night. Helen's occupation was a police officer. All participants, please find the mafia and begin voting. Wendy and Uni look defeated, which is crazy because Wendy is mafia. Remember that? Remember that, okay? Now the voting begins now. Please find mafia and vote for them. Wait, I'm so sorry. There's only two mafia left, right? Yeah, Danny and Wendy, that's it. Oh my God. That's it. So June walks into the bathroom and finds Helen's body dead on the floor. She's got a plastic grocery bag wrapped around her head, strangled. He starts shaking his head. He's shocked. He's upset. And he's like, fuck, are you serious? He falls to the ground and he's just like grabbing fistfuls of his hair. I don't know, it's a lot. And he's like, why, why? First thing in the morning, a couple of students go back to Mimi's body and they cover it with a white cloth and they close her eyes. Albert is balancing with his hands on the wall and he's kind of, he's kind of like cringing at the sight of both of the corpses because they brought Helen down. And Christopher walks in, poor Helen, we don't have a police officer now. How are we gonna even find mafia? Albert also chimes in and he's kind of anxious. Also, we found out who spread the rumor about Helen, but why isn't the game over? Does it only end if we find out all the mafia members still? I don't know. Albert keeps kind of wincing. It's like he's in pain or something. June, on the other hand, is in the bathroom. June is having a flashback. He's walking down this trail in the middle of nature near the river, and he notices Paxe and a classmate on the other side of the river on a bridge on the outside of the railing, about to jump. June starts running towards her, screaming like, yeah, Paxson, like don't jump. He's running as fast as he can, but before he can make it to her, she lets go of the railing and falls into the river. June is trying to get to her, dragging his legs through the shallow parts of the riverbank, but he doesn't even make it far because he looks down and he recognizes, I'm in water. Now, remember what I said about June? June was one of the top swimmers at the school, and then one of his best friends drowned in a pool, and ever since then, he has PTSD of being submerged in water. Like, he, I imagine he can take a shower, but I don't think he would take a bath. Like, it, it's really bad. He's heavy breathing. His voice is skipping a beat, and he's trying not to cry. Later that day, Pak Seon's body is placed on a stretcher and she has a sheet over her head. June is just looking because maybe he could have saved her. And back at the lobby, Christopher is standing there trying to figure out what to do next. He's looking at no one in particular like, what do we do? There aren't that many people left now. Where are the other guys? Are they upstairs? I, I didn't see them. You're right, Mina and Danny, I haven't seen them. Maybe they're planning something. I mean, the three of them did steal the keys together. Mina, Mimi, and Danny. Oh my God. So if Mimi is mafia, then Mina and Danny are probably mafia too. Albert looks stressed, okay? Those bastards. Who are they going to kill this time, huh? Christopher starts to get worried. Hey, sh shouldn't we prep to do something too? Wendy's looking at him like, what are you talking about? Prepare for what? I don't know. Shouldn't we do something so these mafia assholes can't kill us? Like, what if we tied their hands and feet to the bed so that they can't move or anything? Okay, Christopher. Why BDSM did they do that? daddy. What? Why <laughs> did they do that? 
because it's kind of crazy. I don't know. I don't know why they didn't do that. Maybe they didn't know. Yeah, that's true. Yuni's a little bit hesitant. She's like, let's just talk to everybody about it when they get here instead of, I don't know, BDSMing our way out of this, even though BDSM is the answer, maybe not here. So Mina and Danny, they walk in and everyone turns to look at them. Albert looks Mina up and down. You changed your clothes. <gasps> Mina looks at him, but she doesn't respond. Albert just scoffs in disbelief and walks away. Like, definitely not a good look for me, and I'm going to be honest with you. So now that the new day begins, the students are done mourning the two girls, and the bigger objective to find Mafia and vote for them by the end of the night is taking over. Uni and Wendy are sitting on the stairs trying to eat some sort of lunch. All they have to live off the entire building are snacks. And June walks over anxiously. He's got this weird white bottle in his hand. And Wendy's like, wait, what's going on? You showed me how to check for blood last time. Well, this time, find this instead of blood. Helen asked me, if she dies, find the person who killed her. They have no idea what this man is talking about. They're looking down at his hand. He's carrying like an air freshener. And we get a flashback to the night before. Right before Helen died, she spoke to June on the roof. I mean, she knows what's coming. She outed herself to the group because she announced that she's police. She's going to die tonight. Yeah, this is one last ditch, save herself effort, but really only a few more hours because Mafia is going to come kill her. So this is Helen's last ditch effort to save herself, but only for a few more hours. Like there's no way that Mafia is going to go for anyone else that night other than Helen. So she looks at June. I didn't know who to trust. So I'm talking to you. The Mafia is going to kill me first. Help me. Okay, I'll help you, but we got to go hide first before the meet. No, no, not that. I want you to help me find Mafia. What? Just like how Uni found the footprints, I want to set things up so you can identify when they come to kill me. June drops his head. I mean, he doesn't like the fact that the plan isn't to save her, but only after she's dead. But Helen continues. There have been so many opportunities, but I ruined everything. If I had used my ability as a police officer better, maybe I could have saved more people. But I messed it all up. June, I just want to do things properly this time, please. So they set up the plan. June helps Helen up to the ceiling of the bathroom where they open up, like, you know, those pop-up ceilings, like the grids and the squares pop up. Listen, I don't know if that's like an American school core concept. Obviously not. It's at this Korean school, but she's going to go up into the ceiling. She's going to climb up into the ceiling. But before she lifts herself up, she looks down at June and she says, thank you, June. And June just looks back at her. I'm going to come for you first thing in the morning. See you tomorrow. She nods and she crawls her way up through the ceiling and she closes it. June covers their tracks so that nobody knows that she's up there, but he leaves one thing on the floor, the soap dispenser, the white air freshener, which it kind of looks, I don't know. The whole thing is weird. She's hiding in the ceiling. Mm -hmm. So technically they shouldn't be able to find her. They're going to find her though. Right, 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 right. right. And he left the air freshener in the middle of the ground. Like on the corner of the wall. Oh, is that a camera in there? No, that's what I oh. thought, but we we're about to figure it out. Okay. So June gathers everyone in the industrial kitchen and everyone is just standing over one of those metal food prepping tables and June starts spraying the soap from the soap dispenser onto the table, like the air freshener. Then he goes to turn the lights off. The table starts to glow. I added glow in the dark paint in the air freshener. So the shoes of Helen's killer would be coated in this. No way. Danny gets nervous. Are, are you sure Helen asked you to do this and you're not lying? How, how can we believe you? Mina starts getting skeptical too, right? Helen's dead. How are we supposed to believe that she asked you to help June? But June pulls out his phone and shows everybody proof. He took a video of him placing the air freshener on the floor and pans to the mirror, which is a reflection of him and Helen before she's dead. Dang, let's go. So everybody's on edge, but Albert's just in the back crying because the video of Helen really shook him up. We love a little softy, okay? He's missing her. He's a little cutie. And June is saying, do you believe me now? You're not going to oppose me unless you're mafia. Isn't that right? So June starts shining the black light over everybody's shoes in this industrial, darkly lit slaughter room looking kitchen. And he goes from Wendy to Uni to Albert. And now Mina, he scans her shoes. And at first there's nothing, but he scans more. And there's this bright pink glow in the dark paint smeared on one side of her shoe. And Mina starts to panic because everybody's staring at her now. Huh? How is that on there? Everyone starts crowding around to see for themselves, but Albert gets right into it. I told you guys it was Mina. And Danny throws her under the bus. I knew you were suspicious when you suggested stealing Kevin's keys. 
Mina's looking at him like, I did not. That was Mimi. But she's freaking out. She's stuttering. No, this was a mistake. It, it, it wasn't me. Mina, did you kill Helen? I, I didn't kill her. I didn't even know where she was. How could I have killed her? Why is that on your shoe if you didn't do it? How am I supposed to know that? I told you guys, I'm a civilian. Do you even have evidence, Mina? What? Do you have evidence that you're a civilian? June says, I think we found the mafia member. Let's vote now. Mina's like, are you all crazy? I said it wasn't me. I told you I'm a civilian. Uni looks over at June. June, we agreed to vote at night. Albert just burst out loud. What for, Uni? It's clear. What's the point of doing it later? Let's vote now. It's clear it's her. Albert's frantic. He starts grabbing Mina's jacket and Mina pushes him off. Fuck, I said, stop. How many times do I have to say I didn't do it? Albert trips backwards, hits the steel island behind him, and he grabs his stomach, and he's groaning in pain. June is still completely locked in and concentrated on Mina. He says, you still can't explain why you stole Kevin's keys. Because Mimi made me. Christopher doesn't agree. He pipes in. So we have Albert, June, and now Christopher that are being very vocal about Mina being mafia. Christopher screaming, she didn't make you do anything. You plotted together to kill Helen. I told you that's not true. Mimi used me too. Uni seems to be the only one that doesn't seem completely erratic and unemotional. Okay, girl boss, like all these guys are just getting so reactive. Uni's like, everybody, calm down, okay? Let's just calm the fork down. Here, give me that. She takes the black light and starts looking at the bottom of Mina's shoes, and there's nothing. She stands up and says, if she was actually mafia, if she was actually there, it would be on the bottom of her shoes too. It's weird that there's only a little bit just smeared on one side of her shoe. Someone might have put it there. We don't know for sure. Wendy agrees. Fine. Like we planned. Let's vote at night. We need to know everyone's on the same page. Mina is sobbing a little, but she's relieved that she gets to stay alive a little bit longer. June just walks off super pissed, which is like, I don't know. Is this his villain arc? This seems very unlike him, but he's probably very emotional after his promise to help Helen and then it failed. And yeah. Okay. We give him a small pass. Did they shine on Denny's shoes? Yeah. It was Claire? Everybody's Claire. Man. Uni and Wendy go back to the bathroom where Helen was murdered and they start blacking out the windows, the trash bags, duct tape. They turn on the black light. They start investigating the whole area. They look at the air freshener. They look at the floor underneath the vent. Uni says, see... Wendy, look, it sprayed so much, but there's only a little bit on Mina's shoes. Since there was none on everybody else's shoes, the mafia member that killed Helen might have taken off their shoes. That's a possibility. Wendy starts scoping out the bathroom and looks over at the air vent. She opens the little ceiling part and peeks around. Look, there's something up in here. Come. Uni looks around and there's so much blood up there. It's blood. Blood? Yeah, that, but... Whoever did this must have gotten injured a lot because Helen didn't have any wounds. She was strangled. There were no wounds on her, no blood. Then whose blood is that? Wendy and Uni, they go outside and they notice June is in the courtyard. It's still daytime, so they've got a little bit of time before the voting needs to start, but Uni turns to Wendy. Wendy, could you go check up on Mina? I, I'm going to talk to June for a second. Wendy nods and walks off. Uni walks up to June, who's standing there, looking all stoic, staring at nothing, like really in his main character energy. It's giving Vampire Diaries. She's like, sit down. She shows him the video of the blood in the ceiling, and he's not even paying attention. He's like really in his own head right now. I feel like this is him reaching his breaking point. And she says, June, the mafia member might have gotten injured looking for Helen. I don't think it's right to blame Mina because of her shoes. Okay, we can keep looking into it, but if we don't find anything, I'm going to vote for Mina. Uni's trying to reason with him, but June, the mafia might be using Mina the same way that they use the others. If that's the case, then we'll fail to catch mafia again. June starts getting frustrated. The only evidence we found points to Mina. How long are you going to let mafia fool you? June, I can't stand to see the kids dying anymore. Okay? I just want to go home. They both look up and out past the white line. Because, you know, you can't pass the white line or you're... There's the body of two friends. Like all the other students that have died, they've put them in the freezer, the industrial freezer, so that they can be buried later on. But they can't go grab these two friends. So they're just sitting out in the sun. So back in the dorms, Christopher and Albert are in their rooms talking about their suspicions of who they think mafia is. Now, Christopher's pretty confused 
But he thinks it's Mina. She's like the only one that makes sense in his mind. He keeps saying, I mean, it's got to be her, right? Because it's only on her shoes. But also what's with Uni? She's being weird. Albert's laying on the bed. He looks stressed. His hand is on his forehead and he's dramatically laying there and he gets up and he's like, you know what? That's what I'm saying. What's the point of waiting until nighttime, huh? It doesn't make sense. It's Mina. The door slams open into their dorm and Mina walks in. She's got a bag of food and two hot cup ramens that she just made. What the f*** are you doing? Uh, I um, thought that you guys might be hungry, so I brought these so that you guys could eat. Albert just scoffs. Mina brings the cooked ramen towards Christopher, and he's too disgusted with her. He just looks away, and he just says, wow, you really are something. She turns with the two ramens to Albert. Uh, I, I just wanted to get you something to eat. Albert, you must be hungry too. And Albert slams both of his hands down onto the cup ramen. The noodles and broth just splatter everywhere, and he screams, get the f*** out of here. Mina's looking down at the ramen, horrified, maybe even a little bit disgusted that they're being so vile because they used to be friends, but she's trying to keep it together because the whole point of this is to make amends. She kneels down and she's like, oh my gosh, it's all over your shoes. She gets down on her knees and starts scooping the steaming hot ramen noodles back into the cup with her bare hands and Albert's looking at her like she's lost her mind. What are you doing? Oh, it, it's okay, Albert. I swear I'm not mafia. Please just spare me this once. Shouldn't you guys believe me? You, we used to be so close. Christopher, please, can you, just, can you just let me live this one time? Christopher grabs her by the collar and physically pulls her up so that she's standing, if not even levitating. He brings her up to his face and starts yelling, why should I believe you? You're the one who framed Esther with Mimi. No, Esther said to vote for Henry. I had no choice. I swear I'm not mafia, you guys. Please just listen to me just once. But as she's talking, Albert grabs her and drags her out of the door. Get out. And he slams the door in her face. Christopher doubles down, grabs the bags of groceries and throws it out with her. And Mina's just standing there outside shaking. And she whispers, sense of bitches. Just wait and see what I'll do. What? When Mina starts to leave, Wendy walks down the hallway and she's like, yeah, Chemina, let's talk. Come. So Mina follows her into one of the empty dorm rooms and she's basically sitting her down and Mina's saying, wait, you're saying the person who got injured in the bathroom is the mafia, right? Yeah, but we aren't entirely sure yet. We just found blood. So just keep it to yourself. Don't go around telling people. Okay, yeah. But anyway, look, I, I have no wounds at all. It, so he can't beat me. Look, 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 look. Mina starts unzipping her jacket, trying to pull off her shirt to show Wendy. And Wendy's like, whoa, I... I don't need all of this. Like, this is reeking of desperado. I don't need it. Mina scooping the noodles with her bare hands, trying to show Wendy her whole body. Like, Mina is at the end of her little string. I get it. I would be doing the same thing, but it's a lot. Wendy's like, okay. Mina throws herself at Wendy and hugs her. Wendy does not hug her back because what the fork's going on? Like, this is one of the mean girls in school. Mina saying, Wendy, thank you so much for helping me. You know, I really wanted to be friends with you. Same with Uni. All of a sudden, you wanted to be friends with us? No, I've actually thought about it for a really long time. And I'm happy since it feels like we got a lot closer. Wendy does not look convinced. She looks down at Mina's shoes and Mina tries to quickly change the subject. Like change Wendy's train of thought from her little shoes with the glow in the dark paint. So Mina shuffles in her jacket pocket and takes out a set of keys. The keys that go into everything. And she says, you should hold on to these. I'll just follow you around. Why are you giving these to me? Because we're both civilians, duh. Like if I were mafia, I wouldn't give these to you. She's like, I'm not stupid or anything. Just believe me this once, Wendy. I promise I'm not mafia. So it's starting to get dark outside. The time to vote is getting closer and they have not made practically any progress. Everyone still wants to vote for Mina, even though it's clear whoever killed Helen has serious wounds and they did not see any on Mina. So Wendy leaves Mina and goes to find Uni and June in the computer room. They're hunched over a desk when Wendy starts walking towards them. Mina doesn't have any noticeable wounds. There wasn't anything strange when I was talking to her either. June looks up at Wendy. Okay, well, I'll check the others for wounds then. Wait. Uni wants to try something different. The mafia keeps fooling us, right? How about we try fooling them this time? She picks up the camera that Helen was using. I found the camera Helen secretly set up. What if we tell them it's dead and it's being charged and that mafia will try to get rid of the footage in there just like the CCTV footage last time? 
It's not a bad idea. So they're going to set a trap with the camera to see which forker comes to get rid of it. Then that person is likely mafia, even though there's no footage. They're just going to act like there's footage of the murder, but there's none. So June grabs his phone off the desk and texts the whole group through the mafia app. We found the camera Helen set up before she died. It's charging now. We're going to soon find out who the mafia is. Let's meet back up in 30 minutes in the cafeteria. Now what? Uni responds, until then, let's separate the most suspicious pair and create a distraction. Do you think it'll work? I mean, we're going to give them no choice, so let's just make a move. Okay, yeah, we're all for it. So the three of them agree that the most suspicious are Mina and Danny. So Wendy goes to sit with Mina in an empty dorm room. They literally have chairs just facing each other, and Mina is eating pokey sticks like it's cigarettes, pokey sticks, which again, let the girl live. She doesn't have many hours left, probably. I would be snorting powdered sugar as well to feel, I don't know, anything. Meanwhile, Uni is sitting with Danny in the computer room, and she's sitting down at the desk looking bored, and he's just kind of pacing around. Either he's really nervous because he's mafia, or he's really nervous because, I don't know, voting starts and someone's going to die again. Of course, everybody's nervous. So he starts conversation. So where'd you say the camera was again? Oh, it's in the cafeteria. It's charging. Why did they narrow it down to him? Because um, just the way he'd be looking. Like, there was just a lot of weird shit that was going on. Mm. The way that he's, like, pointing the finger at Mina. Like, it was just weird. Okay. Yeah, the whole thing is weird. So Uni gets up from the desk. Oh, and then Kevin died in the storage room that he put him in, remember? Anyway, Uni gets up from the desk and walks out of the computer room, and Danny's just watching her get out. Once she leaves the room, Danny starts breathing faster. He's, like, scratching his head Meanwhile, Mina is getting angsty too. She gets up from her chair and she's like, let's just wait in the cafeteria for the group meeting. She gets up and walks off with Wendy following her. And in the hallway, they run into Christopher. This is Albert's best friend. This is like a random dude. He's like a nice guy. Okay. Christopher is like, is the camera done charging? When are we meeting up? It's in the cafeteria. We're on our way there now too. Okay. I'll come with you guys. Wait, where's Albert? Oh, he said he was in pain or something. So he went to the clinic. What? Mina starts to think the person who killed Helen, remember, got injured in the bathroom when Albert was accusing her of being mafia. She shoved him off of her and he winced in pain. She didn't even shove him that hard. So she's like, wait a freaking minute. She starts booking it for the clinic. Christopher thinks the whole thing is a little, I don't know, a little not necessary. This is Albert we're talking about. But he follows them just to see what's going on. The three of them run into the hallway, into the nurse's office, slam open the door. Albert is hunched over one of the desks with his shirt unbuttoned, sweating, glasses off, on the table. There's a bunch of blood-soaked paper towels everywhere. Mina marches over to the table. What is this? What? Let me look. She's trying to pull his shirt off. She grabs a side and the rest of the buttons pop open and there is an open wound, like a large slice on the side of his stomach. It doesn't go too deep, but it's bleeding. It doesn't look like a stabbing, but like someone took a knife and slashed him. Christopher's eyes are so wide and he's looking at his best friend. I mean, they sleep in the same room together. What the fork is going on? Chris is scared. Albert, what, what is that wound? It... it, it. It's nothing. <laughs> Sorry. It's nothing. It's nothing. I said, what is that, Albert? I got hurt, okay? Clearly, everyone in this room thinks Albert is 100% mafia. But on the other side of the dorm building, in the cafeteria, Danny is glancing from side to side. He's grabbing the charging camera on the table. He didn't realize that there was a camera. If there was, he needs to delete any and all evidence off of it because he clearly killed Helen. And he looks left. He looks right. He grabs the camera and he clicks into it. It's empty. The whole thing is empty. And he's thinking to himself, that doesn't make sense sense and it clicks he's been set up he's about to get caught (laughs) red-handed uni and june burst in what is it are you worried that you got filmed danny june walks straight up to danny grips the camera from his hands grabs him by his shirt hey hey, hey, it's not like that i was just before june can i don't know what he was planning on doing punching him in the face beating him in the face Kissing him. I I don't know. I'm not judging him, right? It's all up in the air at this point. They hear screaming coming from the cafeteria. Mina screaming, hurry, you mafia bastard. Uni and June freeze. Danny looks towards the door too, and they can hear Albert screaming and begging for his life outside. And it's a choice. Do they stay inside with Danny and, I don't know, make out? Or do they run outside and try to figure out what the hell is going on? So they run out. Albert is completely covered in sweat. There's blood on his shirt. Wendy is holding a bloody bunch of paper towels. 
and he's screaming, it's not me. Please, you have to listen to me. It's not me. Mina's pissed now. And the whole ramen thing, and now this, like how he slammed that. She's like, what's there to hear? You're the mafia. Wendy holds up the paper towels. Look at this, everybody. Albert has a wound. No, it's not me. It, it really wasn't. They're all standing in a circle watching Albert beg for his life, trying to convince everybody that it's not him. It's not. I mean, some of them are already not making eye contact, which, like I said, you know what that means. They're about to off him. But standing behind everyone in the very back is Danny. And he's watching everyone turn on Albert. And he can't help. He can't help but smile a little bit. Just a tiny, tiny little mm, smirk little, mm, on the side. Because he's like, this is, he was about to get caught. Like, what are the odds of this type of timing? And June turns around for a split second. What the hell is that smile? Uh. Albert's holding onto the side of his stomach, shaking his head at everybody. No, it's not me, I swear. The group head into the cafeteria and they're standing near all the tables and it's dark. They need to vote soon. And Mina breaks the silence. Hey, loser Danny, why did you check the camera out by yourself? You're mafia, aren't you? Which this is kind of crazy, but Albert goes from being a thousand percent convinced that it's Mina to now he's screaming at Danny, stop lying, you mafia bastard. Danny's like, I was just checking to see if it was done charging. Danny pauses and then points to Albert's wound. How did you get injured? I really don't know. I was like this when I woke up this morning. He got set up. And Danny's like, that doesn't even make sense. You're mafia, aren't you? Albert's like, fucking seriously, this again? I don't know. He fumbles with his phone. He takes it out of his pocket and the intercom comes on again. Albert has voted for Danny. What the hell are you doing, Albert? Danny grabs his phone and he quickly votes. Danny has voted for Albert. Albert starts pointing at Danny and Mina and he's telling the group, hey, just like yesterday, like you, Mina, you came out late this morning. These two have plotted something together. Mimi, Helen, Kevin, Richard, and Jules, everybody that's died, they're all connected to them. Mina starts getting in Albert's face. Jules was one of her best friends. So she's like, crazy bastard. Why would I kill Jules? Because you're mafia. That's why you, there's stuff only on your shoes. Then what about my wound? Huh? I don't have one. You do. And you put that stuff on my shoes behind my back, you pig. Shut up, mafia bitch. Mina's like, fuck you. Mina whips her arm back. She winds it up, okay? And bops him right in the, in the stomach, right where his injury is. Closed fist and everything. He's like groaning in pain. And if that wasn't enough against Albert, Mina pulls out her phone and Mina has voted for Albert. Mina announces to the rest of the group, the one with the wound is mafia, right? So why aren't you guys voting? Danny butts in and almost whines. Yes, the bastard is part of the mafia. Why don't you, why aren't you guys doing something? Uni steps forward and basically squares up against Danny. Shut up, Danny. Did you really come to check if it was charged? I told everybody to wait. Why would you come alone to check for the camera? Because I was worried that nobody was in the cafeteria. A mafia member could have come and touched it. They deleted the CCTV footage. They could have messed up with the camera too. If you thought that, if you genuinely thought that, you wouldn't have come alone. You would have told me to avoid looking suspicious and maybe you tried to delete the camera footage like you did with the CCTV. She's like pushing him in the chest. June jumps in and is backing his girl up. He's like, I saw you with that little smile outside. And June is like, you didn't come to check if it was charged. You wanted to see if you were caught and you tried to delete it. Danny's beginning to yell at this point. I said, it's not like that. I didn't delete anything. I was just looking. You can't accuse me of being in the mafia. June screaming back. You're the only bastard looking at the camera. The intercom comes on. Uni has voted for Danny. Danny shouts, what are you doing? It's not me. I'm not mafia. June has voted for Danny. Let's go. <laughs> so Albert's pointing at Danny now and he's saying, yes, I'm saying to you guys right now, these are the mafia. Hey, Christopher, bestie. Vote for that bastard tonight and vote for Amina tomorrow. Then it's going to be game over. Wendy's trying to be calm. But the problem is, Albert, you have a wound and you don't even know how you got it. So why did you hide it even from your own roommate, Christopher? Listen, it takes a girl to explain it because now Christopher is looking over at Albert like, wait, that's so true. Why did you not mention? Because wouldn't you be scared? He looks to him for an answer. <laughs> 
because because you might have found it suspicious if I told you. Christopher's like, what? You should have been honest with me, Albert. We're best friends. Like, now you just made things complicated. The group hops on to the accused Albert train. Wendy's the captain steering this little ship. Albert's like, shit, wh- why are you doing this now too? Christopher, you're my friend. Wendy smirks. It- it's just none of us knew a mafia member had a wound this morning. So it's strange that you hid it all day to avoid suspicion. Danny smiles again. Because now it's him or Albert, and it's working. Yeah, Albert, uh, maybe you didn't tell Christopher because you felt guilty about being part of the mafia. (sighs) Danny's like, Christopher, you better be careful. He's probably going to kill you today. Albert starts running towards Danny and reaches for his collar. Shut up, you mafia bastard. Now Mina's screaming and she's saying, they're putting on a show. They're both part of the mafia. Just vote for one of them, everyone. Hurry. Albert throws Danny onto the ground, but Danny's barely hurt. Like, it's almost like Albert tosses him onto the ground and Danny just lets him. And the intercoms come on. Wendy has voted for Albert. Uni's looking at her best friend, Wendy, and she's looking confused. They always vote for the same person. This is weird. But Wendy won't even glance in Uni's way. She's like a dog barking up a tree. Like You guys remember though, right? Because she's mafia. Danny is mafia. Yeah, so it's Wendy mafia, Danny mafia. So Wendy's trying to cover for Danny. Yes, by getting Albert to be voted. And Wendy's like, hey, Albert, you killed Helen, didn't you? No, I didn't. Albert shoves her back by her shoulder and Uni steps forward, honestly kind of surprised that her quiet best friend is now acting so intense. And she's trying to stop Wendy. She's like, Wendy, come on. This time it's definitely Albert, everyone. He has a wound too. You bitch, it's not me. Albert grabs the chair and lifts it above his head. He's about to swing it down onto Wendy. Christopher tackles Albert and Uni grabs Wendy by the shoulders. What are you doing, Wendy? Which, I don't know why it's so strange. Like, Wendy's reasonings all kind of make sense. Albert is literally trying to turn her brain into jello with the chair. So, I don't know what the deal is. But there's just too much going on right now to talk about that. After Christopher drags Albert and his chair weapon away from Wendy's head, Albert breaks free and kicks his best friend, Christopher, straight into the chest. Literally right in the middle of his chest. The room goes silent because Christopher and Albert was best friends. Like, they're a bromance. They're the it couple. Sometimes breaking up with a best friend is worse than breaking up with a partner and Christopher looks heartbroken he looks like a fish with his mouth all like (gasps) like that's the whole scene is just a fish he's like yeah Albert what the fuck why aren't you voting for that bastard Danny why are you even hesitating Christopher are you suspicious of me too and Christopher's like it's not that it's just you're the only one that's injured so just explain how you got the injury explain what If that's the case, you and I were together last night. How come I was the only one that was injured? Did you stab me? What? Is that why you told everyone that I went to the clinic, you mafia bastard? Albert grabs Christopher by his collar and he seems more sad than upset. Like he seems sad that his best friend doesn't believe him and he's desperate because if your best friend doesn't even believe you, you have no chances. June breaks up the two. That's enough. Stop. Albert's crying. Seriously, why are you doing this to me instead of finding mafia or instead of finding the person who stabbed me? The pain is killing me. My stomach hurts. The intercom comes on. Christopher has voted for Albert. You're the only one. You're the only one that hid the wound. Why? You should have at least been honest with me, Albert. You couldn't tell me because it's true, right? (sighs) I don't know about everyone else, but how could you be suspicious of me and vote for me? Christopher's eyes start to water and he realizes what he just did and he realizes that he can't take it back. His phone drops to the floor and he's trying to explain himself. It's, it's not that. It's just, how could you vote for me? Albert knows that there's nothing he can do. He's gonna die. And he starts walking off while sobbing. Danny gets up still dramatically on the fucking ground from when Albert had like a little whittle push. You know, he's like still on the ground. He's like, I'm so weak. I'm still a nerd, guys. I'm not a psychopathic killer in the making. Please stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. I'm a nerd. I'm weak. Christopher quietly walks off to watch Albert. And he's just like, this was a sad scene. He's just sobbing down the stairs. Yeah, the actor put his whole 
the end of this one. Who, who, who? Albert's actor in this scene. Uh, like, he put his whole pussy into the whole show. Is it good? It's really good. I was really Albert's sad. really good? Yeah. Like, it was a very guttural reaction. Mm. Mina I mean, but, yeah. like, I was, like, thinking about it, though. Imagine we're there and we voted for each other. Stop! Bro. Stop! The worst betrayal. You could never. I could never handle if you did that to me. Exactly. I, I would, think... No, you can't do that to me. That, you no. That's what I'm saying. I feel like that's the level of betrayal. Like I would already be dead. Like I would already be dead. I know. Like that's, that's what worse I'm saying. than being dead. I know. That's, I'd rather just be dead because it's that type of f- like, f- three. I would lose my faith in the world and humanity. I yeah. would question my whole life right before I die. Yeah. No. No. Yeah, that's pretty bad, huh? <sighs> would you ever vote for me? No. What the heck? What if I was mafia? I will cover you. Really? I will fucking cover you till the last second. Stop it. Oh my God. He had a dream that I shot someone and then he went and touched the gun. Oh yeah. I grabbed the gun. To put his fingerprints on it. <laughs> and I was like, stop it. <laughs> and then I have a suspicion that he wakes up and he comes up with all of these amazing dreams. So I'll be like extra nice to him. That day. I'll be like, yeah, it's really sad. He's walking down the stairs and Mina glances at the clock. They have 45 minutes until 12, which is worse because Albert now has to wait 45 minutes to die. And Mina asks, aren't you guys going to go hide? So they start leaving the cafeteria, but June, Yuni, and Wendy, they want to wait until Danny leaves because he's sus. They don't want him to know where they're hiding. Wendy turns to Yuni and June and she says, we got to go now. There's no time. But June's just hung up on Danny. Danny, it's that bastard, I'm telling you. I saw him smiling earlier. He smiled because Albert was targeted for mafia. Yeah, well, we're already done voting. What can we do now? Let's go. June stops standing around and starts walking towards the door. I'm leaving. You guys should hide as well. Uni's confused. You're not coming with us? Being together is more dangerous. Let's hide separately today. I'll see you guys in the morning. He gives her a soft smile and he walks out. Uni's watching June very confused, but also it's kind of hot because he probably is doing this knowing that Danny is a thousand percent going to target him tonight. Why doesn't June just go take care of Danny right now? Oh, He's about to. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Now it's just Wendy and Uni left in the cafeteria. And so Wendy is like, Uni, we got to go. Like, we got to hide. There's no time. But Uni has a moment and it all starts clicking in her head. And she's looking at Wendy. How did you know that Helen was hiding in there? June never told us she was hiding in the ceiling. Ah! No! Anyone would have guessed that. It's the only place she could have hidden with the placement of the air fresher. How? How would anyone find that exact spot? She must have hidden that way because she w- wanted to live. Albert's wound. Did you do it? Helen and the others? The CCTV, did you delete that? Uni progressively gets more and more anxious. She's scared. She's frantic. Wendy is behind everything. At least that's the feeling. And Uni is trying to desperately get the truth out of Wendy. Did you kill them? Why won't you say anything? You didn't, right? Say you didn't and I'll believe you. Say you didn't, just say it. Why can't you say it? She's falling to her knees, just crying. And Wendy finally says, it's true. Uni is still crying at her feet. Wendy is emotionless. If you knew, you should have just run. Back to Albert because he goes to the snack room to find refuge. He's got 45 minutes to live and he's in there throwing, kicking open all the snacks and he's just eating in a huge pile of food because... Because of course he is. There's the trope in South Korea. Of course he's eating. But also, what would you do in your last 45 minutes in a building full of people that you freaking despise? I would eat my heart's content away too. What else am I supposed to do? Sit and ponder about my life? No, thank you. I'm going to be eating all the convenience store food. And he's eating and he's crying like those assholes. And he keeps crying, Oma, like save me, Oma. And he's crying for his mom. After Albert leaves the cafeteria to hide in the snack room, Christopher walks off. He looks shocked. He's just standing with his mouth open, still looking like a fish. <laughs> fish defer. It's not Christopher. It's a what? fish defer. Anyway, Mina goes to hide and Danny also walks out alone. He sees fish defer and he makes a mental note of where his direction is. June also sees Danny and that's his mission. He starts walking after him, follows him into the bathroom and he's like, hey, Danny, 
He runs towards Danny, who's standing in front of the last stall in the men's restroom, and he jumps and pushes Danny up against the wall. And inside the open stall, he sees the bucket and the rubber apron covered in blood. That's Danny's kill kit and a bloody fire extinguisher. June grabs Danny by his collar and pushes him up against the wall. Why did you do it, Danny? Why did you do that to those innocent kids? He literally chucks Danny across the bathroom again. And Danny is so dramatic on the floor, like dying from this tiny little push. Jesus, why don't you just believe me? I'm not mafia. You'll find out once you die why we don't believe you. Then he goes into the stall where Danny's kill kit is and comes out with that fire extinguisher. He raises it over his head and he's about to scream. But then he throws it on the ground. He can't do it. Danny gets back up to his feet. And now Danny boy's in control. He's like, we're just trying to survive together, aren't we? But I'm not your friend or anything like that. So you don't care if I die, do you? You're the only one that actually thinks that way, Danny. It's you. You killed everyone so you can survive alone. How are you different from Kevin? Wait, so he knows it's Danny. Yeah. Yeah. But he couldn't kill Danny yeah. because he's not a killer. Yeah, dude, come on, That's what kill I'm or saying. be killed. That's like, what I'm saying. Just tie him up or something. Yeah, like, lock him up. Like, There's a million things you could do. Knock him out with the fire extinguisher. You don't have to kill him. Give him a little pop pop. You know. Oh, pop, pop. Anyway, what do you know, huh? Look, just look. Look at this. He starts unbuttoning his shirt and rolling up his sleeves and there's marks everywhere on his body, healed wounds. I've tried to kill myself several times over Kevin and his little gang. You paid no attention to me when I was being tortured. What the fuck did you do? You just pretended to be nice in front of everyone. You haven't fixed anything. You weren't even interested in actually helping me. What right do you have to say such things? Someone like you is way more disgusting than Kevin and his gang. Do you know that? Do you know that? A tear is rolling down June's cheek and he throws the fire extinguisher to the ground again. He's waving his little white flag. Uh, Danny gets mad. If you can't kill me, at least beg for your life. I guess I'm not scared to die a second time. So just don't hurt Uni and the rest. And he sits down. Wait, how on the back is that even floor. making sense? It's not making sense. Okay. He sits. Like, if, like if someone's like going to kill us, or even kill you. Like, you bet me. Like, what You're you- not going to be like, all right, well, I'm not a killer. Yeah. Like, what are yeah. you talking about right now? Yeah. You know, I always find it interesting. I don't like overly moral main characters when they believe self-defense is not moral. Yeah. It's like, I can't hurt hurt the demon. Yeah. Because but that's a lie. I- like, self-defense is moral. Like, if you're trying to kill me and I didn't do anything to you. Yeah. I'm going to defend myself. Sorry. Yeah. Of course he's going to kill your girlfriend. Of course. Yeah. Why wouldn't he? <laughs> if he's mafia, that's the whole objective of the yeah, game. He is, must kill your girlfriend. He's going to kill all the others yeah. and your girlfriend and you. And you're just sitting down on the bathroom floor. Yeah. What's the logic? Yeah. I don't understand on, the man. logic. It's just weird. He better is be playing some games here. <laughs> it's just weird. He okay? better jump up with a little like underbelly stab. Like, tsk, 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 tsk. yeah. Like up the butt stab. Yeah. but anyway i don't know okay so back in the snack room albert is just eating all of the snacks furiously i mean he's gonna at least die with a full stomach you know and mina runs into the snack room thinking that it's empty so she locks up the door behind her well she like closes the door behind her and she's whispering to herself i don't have the keys she doesn't have the keys to lock it Wait, Mina's in the snack room too? Yes. But she didn't see him? No. And Albert has slowly, quietly gotten up and is lurking behind Mina. And just as she's about to turn around, he rushes on top of her, grabs her by the throat with both of his hands and pushes her up against the metal door and then throws her on the ground and he's screaming, die, die. Now, Albert is going full on crazy mode. I mean, he's going to die anyway. So literally, he does not give any flying forks. He throws her to the ground and then gets on top of her. He's like just strangling her. Die. Let's go together, you mafia bitch. Mina's pleading. I'm not mafia. I don't care. You're a murderer because you voted for me. So die. Don't kill me. Albert looks up and away from Mina's face as he chokes her out. Mina's legs are kicking in panic until they're not. Meanwhile, Mina and Albert are in their scuffle. Christopher has found his little hiding spot and um, he's in the nurse's office and he sees Albert's glasses left there. And it's slowly starting to hit him. He killed his best friend. And the intercom comes on. 
Albert will be executed as he had the most votes. Albert's occupation was a civilian. And what? Christopher starts crying. He's trying to open the door to get to Albert, but it's too late. He's dead. And also he has to hide. So he closes the door again and tries to save himself at least. Do these hiding even work? No, because people will just act through the door. In the snack room, Albert and Mina, they hear the intercom's announcement, the same one that Christopher heard. Albert can barely react before he recoils from the frequency that pierces his hearing, and he takes his hands off of Mina, and his eyes roll back. They're completely white, and he just starts eating. Eating? Yeah. Eating now, he's like eating with an animalistic intensity. He is going to eat himself to death until he chokes on the food Aww. and dies. And Mina is awake again. She's alive. And she hears and sees what's going on. And she's so scared and so terrified and so traumatized. She slides into the little supply cabinet and just hides there. And now she knows that he wasn't. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> In the men's restroom, Danny and June, June falls asleep, slumped against the wall because the music has come on. Danny lifts the fire extinguisher, about to bring it down, but follow Mafia's rules. You must have a Mafia meeting and unanimously pick a person for execution. He stops his attack and he throws the oh fire extinguisher. Fucking hell. He leaves the bathroom. June is untouched, okay? And he rushes to the cafeteria to meet with Wendy. And there in the cafeteria, Wendy is busy trying to rearrange Uni's body to make her more comfortable because she fell asleep all weird. Oh, yeah. that's so cute. And they're both wearing friendship bracelets. So Danny runs in. Hey, what the hell was with the camera? Why didn't you warn me about it? You should have told me what was going to happen. I thought I was going to die. That's why I helped you. You didn't die. Thanks to me. What? The three of us are always together. What could I have done? I would have looked suspicious if I came to see you. Danny takes a breath and calms down. He slouches back in the chair with a steak knife in his hand and he's tapping the table. Okay. What happened to your face, Danny? The class president asked me to kill him, but not to hurt you guys. So, did you see where everybody else went? The class president's in the bathroom and the rest are in the annex. What are you going to do now? No matter who you kill tomorrow, you're going to be the biggest suspect. Danny realizes that Wendy's right, and he's like, damn. He bangs the snake knife on the table. There's really no answer. As you said, no matter who I kill, everyone will vote for me tomorrow. By the way, do you think that you can win without me? He points with his knife at Uni asleep on the floor. She's a civilian too, and she's not on your side, you know? There aren't many people left. Of course, they'll be suspicious of you too. You can never win on your own. The longer you drag it, the worse off you'll be. Why don't we do it my way this time? No, they want to kill Uni. What's your way? Well, why just kill one person? You want to kill everybody today, tonight? Look what happened to Jasper. They killed him during the day and nothing happened. Let's just kill everybody. Wendy glances at Uni and pauses for a millisecond. Okay, then I'll take care of Uni and June. Then you can go to the annex. You want me to go alone? There's no time. We can't even check the CCTV. How do we find them all? We need to move separately. He kneels over Uni and puts the knife delicately to her neck to test Wendy. By the way, you've only planned so far. You haven't killed anyone yourself yet. Are you sure you can do it? If we're going to kill my friends, it's better if I do it. All right. Good luck. So Danny and Wendy have made a plan. They drag Uni's sleeping body down into the walk-in freezer. This is where they have been storing all the dead bodies and the walk-in has kind of become a morgue. So they open the door, walk in and drag Uni's body inside. They put Uni down next to the rest and she still has her friendship bracelet on. Wendy walks over to the thermometer and starts lowering it all the way. Danny glances down to see Uni's phone laying next to her and he quickly picks it up and pockets it without Wendy seeing. When she gets back into the freezer, he's acting normally. Stabbing with a knife is quick you want me to do it for you i said i don't want to do stuff like that it doesn't matter how we just have to kill her okay it's not just anyone it's uni at least do me this much if we leave her here in the freezer she'll die in 30 minutes anyways fine check if she died after 30 minutes and message me make sure you take care of the class president too he leaves to go hunt down the two remaining students. So that's Christopher and Mina. And he finds Fishtofer and he kills him in the clinic. He strangles him with a plastic bag. He literally puts the plastic bag over his head and just watches him run out of oxygen because Christopher, Fishtofer, can't wake up and take the plastic bag off. Wait, there's only a couple of people left now? Yeah. Oh my goodness. And then he goes to find Mina 
And he's going to kill Mina. Yeah, yeah. It's a whole thing. So he grabs a heavy dumbbell in his hand, probably to smash her head in. And he goes to the snack drawer first. And he sees Albert. He sees all the vomit all over his body. He knows that he choked. And he's like, what the hell? And he's about to leave, but he decides to open up the supply closet. And there's Mina's body. And instead of killing her, he slowly cooks a ramen and starts eating it at the table. Why? He's just trying to enjoy his kill you'll see he's like slurping drinking straight from the bowl okay until he gets a text message from wendy and it's a picture of june it's a picture of him on the bathroom floor the fire extinguisher and his head are covered in blood and danny says to himself no nah, so we can kill everyone so he leaves the ramen kneels down by mina and just goes to town like pounding her face with the oh dumbbell my goodness then he sits back down to finish the ramen got cold and ding danny gets another text from wendy did you find everyone he texts back i'm still looking for the other two wait a minute how about uni how did that go she's dead are you sure she's dead danny pulls out a stash of phones in his pocket and goes through all of them he's testing the power button so when you die your phone dies <gasps> and uni's phone hasn't died ah uh... he texts her again to confirm that uni is dead and wendy responds if you don't trust me come back to the freezer and check for yourself i'm on my way now danny meets with wendy in the freezer and wendy comments check quickly let's go find the rest danny's still livid hey move that sheet off of her so i can confirm that she's dead move it off of uni yeah can get it moved he pushes her towards the dead bodies the frozen graveyard why are you doing this you can check for yourself he looks over at uni's body and the little friendship bracelet is sticking out Wendy, do as I say. You still can't consider me a loser and a pushover, do you? Huh? He holds up Uni's phone. Why would this turn on if she's dead? Why? Why didn't you kill Uni, huh? Why didn't you kill her? If you can't really kill her, then you should die too. Danny brings his arm back and he plunges the knife towards Wendy's stomach in slow motion. And then it cuts. Mafias can kill each other too? You're about to see. It cuts to a clip of June on the ground in the bathroom with a blood and fire extinguisher. And then it cuts to a clip of Uni sitting in a closet asleep. Uni is in a closet, not in the freezer, in a closet. And ladies and gentlemen, we have now entered the final episode. In the freezer, Danny's arm is shaking as he's gripping the steak knife, trying to push it into Wendy's stomach, but he won't go in. It's like there's a force field against her. He looks down in disbelief. Force field against him. Against him, yeah. And the announcement goes off. And of course, they hear it even in the freezer. A mafia member cannot kill another mafia member. You know, ah. you know what happens if you break the rules, right? If you kill me, you'll die too. She then turns and sprays Danny's in the eye and he falls, like sprays him with some sort of liquid. He falls on top of the dead bodies and Wendy runs out of the freezer and locks the door behind. Danny's screaming, I'll kill you, you fucking bitch. Wait, so she locked Danny inside the freezer, mm -hmm. but he, she can't kill Danny. No. So... Just I don't like know. freeze him into a popsicle? Like, what are they doing? <laughs> yeah. So he's swinging and banging on the door while Wendy puts her back to the door in relief and listens to him crying. She just responds, just give up. Everything will be over in 30 minutes anyway, Danny. Danny notices the temperature knob is missing from the thermostat. Wendy disabled it before she locked him inside. Why? We're a team, Wendy. You can't do this to me. Get it together. There's no point of saving Uni and June. They're civilians and you're mafia. You can't live happily ever after together. Wendy says calmly, listen carefully, okay? And Danny's like, no, I'm not going to listen. And he just tells her, fuck you and fuck Uni too. He runs back into the freezer and just starts stabbing the fork out of the white sheet covered body. And he rips the blanket off to see Uni's face and it's not Uni. It's frozen Helen with Uni's friendship bracelet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He got played. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
The next morning in the bathroom, June slowly wakes up. So the pool of blood was not his. He was posed by Wendy. It was all fake. And the announcement comes on. Christopher and Mina were executed by the mafia overnight. Christopher and Mina were civilians. All participants, please find the mafia and begin voting. So now we have four people left. Two civilians, two mafia. The civilians are Uni and June, and the two mafia are Wendy and Danny. So Uni runs out of the closet to find Wendy, and they meet in the lobby. You should have killed me too if you were going to do this. Why did you let me live? I need to die if you want things to end the way that you want. So why did you let me live? Why are you doing this? What are you thinking? I can't talk for long right now, but let me take care of Danny first. June walks up. What are you doing? What are you talking to her about, huh? Did you kill them, Wendy? Answer me. June starts shoving Wendy, but Uni breaks them up. Please calm down, guys. And Wendy runs off. She goes back to the freezer, but the door is broken and Danny is no longer inside. She rushes to the men's bathroom and opens the far stall on the last. His kill kit is empty. Wendy knows that Danny is up to something like he's going to be extra pissed. So she texts both of her friends, Junie and Junie and Uni. June and Uni. Danny's going to try to kill you guys. If he runs into you, be careful. Uni reads the message and puts her phone down. She looks at June. Why do you think Wendy didn't kill us? Whatever. We can't even think about that anymore. We can't trust either of them anyway. Let's vote for Danny right now and think about what to do next. What do you mean what to do next? He won't just sit still if we vote for him too. He'll do whatever he can. And even if he dies, there'll still be Wendy. We'll be in danger at night. We need to take care of things before then. What are you saying? What are you thinking of doing? If necessary, we will need to kill Wendy to stop her. I'll go to the storage in case something might happen. I- I'll come with you. No. Wait, who's talking this? June. Way? June wants to kill Wendy. Yeah, like he couldn't kill Danny, but suddenly he wants to kill this Wendy. This doesn't make sense. Yeah. So June is like, I got to go to the storage and get something like a weapon to prepare. And Uni is like, I'll come with you. No, get some rest. Why? I'll go. Please just listen to me. You know they're on the second floor. I'll be right back. Keep the door locked. Um. Once again... Once again, this part is kind of frustrating. Uni okay. turns around and she stares at the dorm room she used to share with Wendy. And it's just depressing now. She goes to her backpack and she realizes that she has Wendy's present to open. Remember Wendy got her birthday present at the beginning of like episode one? Mm-hmm. And she opens it and it's a small USB. Mm-hmm. She plugs it into her laptop and she sees security footage of all the rooms in the dorms. But not really. They don't look like security footage. It almost looks like renderings of the entire place. Like someone was sculpting it out in some sort of crazy 3D coding software program. But more than that, the screen turns a little bit purple and Uni starts having these strange flashbacks of her and Wendy sitting in the library back before all this happened, back at school when times were better. And they had just gifted each other their friendship bracelets. But Uni's head starts to hurt and she keeps clutching her hair. And every time she sees Wendy back in that library, it's not Wendy. It's Pak Seon. Wendy is Pak Seon? Wendy is Pak Seon. Then why the hell are they calling her Wendy? Because they don't know it's Pak Seon. Everyone thought she was Wendy. It's like, it's weird. It's it really is weird. weird. It sounds weird. None of this makes sense, okay? But it's all going to come together. Okay, And okay. Uni is like, no fucking way behind her uni hears a clash and the door to her room slams open meanwhile outside in the hallway wendy sees june walking around and she yells after him danny's missing i'll look for him just stay with uni that's enough i'm not gonna be fooled by you guys anymore he's really planning to kill us all june he's dangerous that's enough i said i know you guys are mafia you and danny are the same to me Wendy's breathing fast, staring daggers into June's eyes. Obviously, she's not trying to kill Uni. It feels like she's got a bigger picture in her mind. And they get a text message in that moment. Come to the rooftop if you want to save Uni from Danny. So both of their eyes go wide. They're looking up at each other, staring. And in tandem, they both start moving. They're running up to the stairs, going up to the rooftop, just running. And then, okay, so the rooftop is very interesting. It's not like a rooftop patio where they have a high railing. It's almost like a maintenance rooftop where you put um, water tanks, water coolers, like stuff like that. The ledge is really short. It's probably below your knees. It's very dangerous. And it's it looks abandoned. It's filled with overgrown weeds and grass. And it's clear that no one has got onto this in years. But in the middle of 
of the grass is Danny and Uni. Uni's hands are bound behind her back and Danny is holding her like a human shield with a knife blade aggressively against her neck. June gets up the stairs first, then Wendy. And Danny's like, you fucking two doing the most, okay? Don't come any closer. Danny pulls June closer to him. Don't do that, you crazy bastard. That's enough. Let go of Uni. June and Wendy out here fighting for Uni's life, but Uni has got the survival instinct of a freaking potato. She turns around to face Danny, the one that's holding a knife to her neck, and she's like, did you kill Kevin and Jasper too? Are you happy to end up just like your bully? Danny's like, shut up, you fucking bitch. He turns around and starts jutting the knife near her throat, and she's like, you don't have to do this. Danny stares at Wendy. How does it feel to see me again? Happy, right? After you try to kill me in that fucking freezer? Listen, I'm the one that you want to kill. Let go of uni. I wish I fucking could. But what can I do if I can't even stab you? So what do you want, Danny? What else? I should finish what I started yesterday. Get on there. He nods towards the ledge of the rooftop. You want me to jump? Yeah. You have to die. I can't kill you. Wendy starts making her way towards the edge and Uni's trying to reach for her but Danny's holding her back and Uni's screaming no don't do it don't do it Danny's saying shut your mouth June's trying to save the day but not really he's just all words he's like if that's enough you son of a bitch just take me instead Danny's like shut up and just watch the show bro just watch the show okay Wendy's just calmly walking towards the edge she's got no fear no resentment nothing she gets close to the edge and turns around by the way what are you gonna do after I die are you going to let go of uni? That would depend on how you behave. You're not going to let her live even if I die. How the hell do you know, huh? You don't want to jump? Should I kill her right now then? No, it, it's not that. I wish I could jump too, but it's against the rules. What are you saying? A mafia can't self-exit. They can't do that. Why not? What about no what then? Wendy turns her feet and she's moving towards Danny, who's getting freaked out because she's getting closer and she's too calm. Noah got executed because he broke the rules. This is a very different situation. Don't fucking come closer to me, Wendy. I'd be dying because you threatened me, so you'd still be killing me. Just shut up and jump. Don't you remember my warning in the freezer last night? Do you want to die together? Get back, just jump. While Danny is caught up trying to get Wendy to jump and stay away from him, Uni decides this is the perfect moment. She bites down on his arm hard. Danny drops Uni. June runs to tackle Danny to the ground and they're just going at each other. Meanwhile, Wendy is comforting Uni like, oh my God, that was so scary. Are you okay? Like, I don't know why she's comforting her. It's kind of weird. I don't even think that she's very injured, if not at all injured. But June's about to be because Danny picks up a rock and slams it into June's head twice until he's unconscious. I feel like they could have t taken him out a long time ago. Yeah. Danny gets up, drops the rock, picks up the little steak knife, and is now walking towards the girls. And he's trying to kill Wendy. He's ready to go. He's like, let's go together then. Let's die together. He starts charging towards her, but Uni stands up and runs towards his knife and gets stabbed straight oh. in the stomach. She sacrificed her life to save her best friend, Wendy, who is still mafia. Uni falls to the ground. And Wendy's holding her, trying to console her, trying to tell her to stay awake, stay alive. Just like, please listen to me. June gets up again and attacks Danny. And they're like going at it again. Wendy's trying to prevent Uni from looking at them because she thinks that June's going to die today. And in the end, Danny gets up and he starts walking towards the girls. And he tries to grab for his knife. But it's not in his hands. He looks down. And it's jabbed deep into his stomach and you can only see the candle. And he drops to the ground. Danny has died. Danny was mafia. The civilians are going to win. They're going to win. Wendy just has to die now. Wait, so who killed Danny? June. Oh, he grabbed the knife yeah, and stabbed him. In okay. the little tussle. Now, June gets up and he's got a nasty head wound. He walks over. He's trying to keep Uni alive. The whole thing is just getting crazy. And Uni's just staring at Wendy now. And she's saying, I'm sorry. I think I know who you are now. I missed you, Selena. But please just stop this. I'm sorry. I had no choice either. I know. It's okay, Selena. Just stop now. 
And slowly, Uni closes her eyes and she goes limp. And Wendy just calmly walks towards the ledge, gets up, takes one last look back at June, who's crying over Uni's limp body, turns around and falls to the ground. Wendy has died. Wendy was a mafia. The mafia game has ended with a civilian victory. But every moment, every death, every conversation starts replaying all the way back from Wendy falling off the building to the very beginning of the show. And Uni wakes up, breathing heavy, with wires connected to her head. She looks down. Everything's blurry. She tries to rip the wires from her head. There's wires attached to her fingers, to her arms. She's ripping them all off. And she's laying in some sort of chair. And next to her is another chair and another chair. There's two rows of chairs. And everybody is attached to wires. What the fuck is going on? Uni gets up and her nose starts bleeding. And in front of her, she sees a blurry June attached to wires in a chair. He looks asleep or dead. I don't know. She's trying to shake his knees. June, June, wake up. We gotta go, June. And she hears a voice behind her. Just leave him. He might end up in a coma if you interrupt him while he's connected. The lights turn on in this giant room. It looks like some sort of arena or warehouse and it's completely empty minus two rows of 30 chairs and they're all hooked up to wires and each chair is another student from the mafia game. Uni whips her head around to where the voice is coming from and at the front there's a screen with all these lights. It's like a giant wall panel of screens and it's all security footage from inside the dorm room. And there's a couple standing in front of her. They look like billionaires. They're probably not, but they're very smartly dressed. What's going on? The woman walks up to her. Do you remember us? You're Helen's parents. What's all of this? The lady walks closer. How's the game? The lady reaches over and pulls Uni's hair back behind her ears. Was the dying experience scary and painful? What did you just ask me? Uni starts looking around and all the students in the game, they're flinching in their chairs. They look stressed, even though they're just hooked up to machines. What's happening to everyone? What did you do? You're telling me this is a Black Mirror episode right now? You're telling me this is one of those? I mean, I guess. I guess it's very unrealistic, but still. Bro, not not one of those. It was all a dream. <laughs> yeah. Sun's dad walks up. Don't worry, they're only asleep. Sun's mother says, they're unconscious, but the pain is real. Was this all a game? You've only come here recently. You've played the game dozens of times already. Time moves at a different pace in the game, but Wendy is supposed to be the sole winner in all games. You guys won for the first time. What did you do to Wendy that made her help you? Tell me. We need to know so that we can fix it. I woke you up to ask you that. What? Why? Why are you doing this? In the world that my daughter created, you all need to pay for your sins. What sins? Sam's mom scrunches up like she's in pain and she starts walking closer to Wendy. What sins? Did you really just ask me what sins just now? The sin of bullying Sion who is innocent. The sin of putting her in hell by believing these baseless rumors. Those are your sins. Uni has a tear falling down her cheek and she remembers. So Danny had photoshopped a bunch of videos of Helen and like deep fakes of her and started spreading them throughout the school. Nobody really cared enough for her. Even when she was stressed out, Uni was so busy flirting with June, she didn't even chase after Helen to ask her what's going on. And when it got too rough and too tough, she ended up jumping off the bridge into the river. And in the present time, in that room, Helen's mom is screaming at Uni, your classmate died. But why? Why did nobody try to take responsibility? Everybody's afraid that they'd be in trouble. You say it was a joke, a big misunderstanding that you didn't know. They're all excuses. No one owned up to their faults. Nobody did. That's why we created this game. I wanted you to feel the pain, just like how our Helen felt, to teach you what you've done. Yeah, I know that you were a special friend to Helen. You should have saved her then. Why did you leave her to die? You're just like the rest of them. The memories get erased every single time, so you'll never get used to the pain. It'll feel very new every single time. Live in this game forever. Uni starts crying and choking on her tears, and Helen's dad slowly leads her back to the chair, and she tries to reason with him. I also miss Helen a lot. I want to tell her that she suffered so much on her own, and I just want to apologize for not being there for her, for not knowing. And if someone has to be responsible, I'll be responsible. Just let the rest of them go home, please. You're not entirely back to normal right now. It might hurt if you strain yourself too much. I don't care about being in pain at all, so just choose me. Please let everybody go. Just let me stay. 
Wow. Salen's dad looks at his wife and they hook Uni back into the game. But when they before they restart, he looks at his wife and says, she got her memories back because Wendy helped her. Wendy changed the setting as a birthday present so she could get her memories back. What are you trying to say right now? Self-exiting wasn't one of the options. Wendy took that action believing she was Helen. She chose to save them. Get it together. That's not our daughter. It's just an error caused by the setting in the game. Let's go. We got to do it again. Helen's mom is trying to click the restart button, but her husband is trying to fight her and she's, he's screaming. It wasn't a simple error. It was Wendy's will. What if Helen doesn't want this game to play? What if we're taking revenge for ourselves? No, no, we're not. We aren't even close. We aren't even done yet. She bet her life to save her friend. Not everybody did, but some felt guilty for what happened to Helen. Helen did too. We could give them another chance. Let's just let them go and keep an eye out for them. No, I can't do that. No. Helen is dead. Helen's dad hugs his wife. Uni is watching them, but her eyes slowly close. And when she opens them again, she's back on the bus. And this time, Wendy is not sitting next to her. She looks to the left, and she sees June, and she smiles. And then she turns. The kids in the back are playing Mafia, and they're headed to the mountain resort. Does and she, she remember everything? Not right now. Oh. And then she turns her head, leans it up against the window, and as they're driving, she notices the windmills aren't moving. They're static. The phone rings in the front of the bus. The bus driver's getting a call. He picks it up, and she looks in the rearview mirror. His shadow is still driving with no phone to his ear. She looks back towards the bus, panicking. Nobody else knows what's going on, but Uni does, and she makes eye contact with Wendy. Wendy stares at her briefly and kind of gives her a slightly mean look and then goes back to staring out the window again. Are they friends? Are they not friends in this? I don't know. But the bus keeps moving. Is that the end? That's the end. So you're saying the game is restarting. Everything got reset, but there's some glitches? Or? No. Everything got reset. Maybe Wendy has been reprogrammed to not be friends with Uni. We don't know. Oh, they changed it. Yes, but we know that Uni knows. Knows? Knows that this is... The work of Helen's parents. Oh. Like, it's, it looks like she knows on her face. Oh. Yeah. Oh, she remembers. Yeah. Okay, then we need a season two. That's what I'm saying. So I was thinking season one is enough of this. Like, 12 episodes with these characters, this same plot line. But I think this detail changes everything. But and I, I think don't think they would make season two. I don't think so. Right? I don't think in a million years. But I think it'd be very interesting to play around with how they would work in a new perspective with season two. Like, it would be like the butterfly effect. How can she change other small details that would change the outcome of things? Yeah. Yeah. Man, you're telling me we just watched the dream. I know. Because I can, I can make a drama out of my dream too. <laughs> Bro, your dreams are so unhinged. Your dreams are so unhinged. More unhinged than this? No. <laughs> yeah, this was a little unhinged. I liked it. You liked it? The ending was okay. Uh, ah. I can't think of a better ending. I am usually not a fan of these endings, though. Whereas like, hee hee, it's not real life. I hate those endings. I'm like, I was so <laughs> fucking invested in this. And now you're just going to throw a hee hee, hee hee, ha ha, toodaloo, bitch, what? <laughs> Usually I don't like it. But I think this one, it does get me thinking of how she's going to change things the next round. Yeah. So that I, I really like a lot. The parents just kidnap 30 students. I was also thinking that. Like, do they kidnap a bus? All also, how are the parents so rich? Also, how is not everyone's looking for them? Also, where are they? Also, like, no, yeah. how are they going to stay alive just by sitting there? I was thinking about that because they're all in their uniforms. I'm like, who's wiping their ass? Yeah. Who's feeding them? Yeah. Who's wiping their ass? Who's flipping them so they don't get bed sores? Yeah. You're asking all the right questions, I think. Anyways, refund. <laughs> <laughs> so i hope you guys enjoyed today's video let me know in the comments and i will see you guys in the next one bye